live. Welcome to the live Hemingway Jones Pen Show, where anything can happen and usually does. This is our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals, and journaling, just about everything and anything to keep you inspired, to keep you writing, to keep you passionate about fountain pens and this whole world of ours. We are about ideas. This is not a channel selling you things. There's no, there's no shop here. We're just exchanging ideas, celebrating when we do buy a pen. Maybe even when we have too many pens, as I have recently been feeling. I actually sold my first pen. I'm going to, well, second pen. I did sell one last year, but this is, this was, this was kind of bigger. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about my kind of collecting strategy going forward and how I'm viewing how many pens I personally want to own and how many I can actually use effectively because I only have one hand and it's a limitation that I can write with. Well, actually, I, I can kind of write with my left. It's, it's not very pretty, but I can do it, even with the fountain pen. But welcome, welcome to all. I see a lot of likes. Thank you for the likes, guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate all your support. You're all lovely. I'm so glad we can meet these Tuesday nights. It's always a lot of fun for me. Tonight's going to be very special. We have a very special guest. We have Vanessa Root joining us at the half hour mark or thereabouts to speak about her amazing onion skin journal how she developed it how she came up with the idea what keeps her inspired what kind of things she's writing what she's using to write what kind of ink she's writing with who knows we have so much we could get into and we're going to try to get into it tonight very quickly and it's going to be really great to speak to her live now i need to recognize the amazing Marco Souza kicking it off with a 25 hour super chat. Good evening, Tim. Good evening, Marcos. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You help to keep the lights on. I always say that. I like to uh, try to emphasize how much your support means to me, how much I appreciate it. Because YouTube doesn't pay a lot of attention to a small channel like mine. Although we're getting bigger. It's amazing. I never thought... We'd have as many friends joining us as we do. And I'm very happy. I'm very appreciative of each and every one of you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Daryl McLeod's here. Of the Clan McLeod. Good to see you, Daryl, my friend. Lots of lovely people here. Let's see who else is here quickly. Puppet Access. Always a joy. I see the amazing Kirk Geisinger. Allie J. Allie, I, I'm using my new backdrop Ellie helped me to decide which backdrops to purchase. I've been trying to um, class up my presentations a little bit with some better backdrops. I'm going to have a little tea. I hope you don't mind. It saves my voice. This is mint tea. And anyone who's asking, I looked at the, uh, I looked at the little tea bag thing. It's roomy Moroccan mint tea. Many people were asking, what kind of mint tea are you drinking? And my response, of course, I don't know, because <laughs> I really didn't know. But um, I looked, and that's what it is. So why is tea important? Why is tea important this week of all weeks? Why? Why tea? I'll tell you why. Anybody want to guess? No, I'll tell you. Thursday, noon, a video I have been waiting to share with you for so long. I record out like two months, guys, usually, usually. I recorded this two months ago. I posted a little bit of teaser on Instagram. Maybe it wasn't noticed. That's okay. Um, but what it is, is my top five, top five favorite inks that are inspired by tea. My top five favorite tea flavored inks. Maybe my most beautiful video I've ever recorded. And I'll tell you why. Because Helen helped me. <laughs> um, I made beautiful displays with the tea, with the ink. And then I said, Helen, what do you think? Is this, 
is this pretty? Did I do okay? And she had fantastic suggestions. She was pulling props out saying, why don't you add this? Why don't you add that? It's pretty good, guys. It's beautiful. It's this Thursday at noon. One of my best videos I've ever done. I think you'll like it. You like tea? You like fountain pens? What's not to like? And I searched far and wide, far and wide, for interesting tea colors. There's some old favorites I think you'll like, and there's some really obscure ones. And in Hemingway Jones tradition, is there more than five? I don't remember. I'll be honest. But um, it, it, I think you'll really like this one. I think you'll really enjoy it. I see already some votes. Taz Brown's into the Earl Grey. Taz, how are you? Oh, Onion Skin Journal's here. Very good. Well, I know you're, you'll show up anyway because you're already here. Good to see you. Happy to have Onion Skin Journal here. Uh, so, big news this week. I'm going to switch over to the cam. I always do a little bit of like a pen check. Allie J, what do you think? What do you think, Allie? You like this? I think it kind of classes the place up a little bit. You guys know that my desktop is a mess. I'm thinking of finally replacing my desk. I've been looking at um, some desks because I feel like I'm missing a storage opportunity. My desk doesn't have very nice storage. Okay, so this is my totally complete rubbish pen holder, but it's it does a really good job because there's a lot of negative space here. There's a lot of like compactable space to protect a pen, so I've been using it quite a bit. Um, anybody recognize this pen in the comments? Anybody paying attention to my videos lately, hopefully? Okay, so this is the Mont Blanc 149 origin series 100 year anniversary pen which i've been using quite a bit quite a bit and i want to say some stuff about this pen that i didn't even say in the video but first i like to kind of write with it a little bit i've really been enjoying it this is one of the most feedback filled nibs i've ever felt from Mont Blanc. Noisy. Love it. Plus, it's very narrow for a medium, isn't it? Very narrow. Very nice pen. All right, so let me um, speak about it a little bit. Ah, oh, she's a beauty. One of the things I really love is the marbled cap. And some people don't like this. I love this engraving. It's really nice. I don't think I would have liked it on the barrel, to be honest, because it does have a bit of texture, but this is not a pen you post. So for me, this goes off and it goes there. And then I'm holding this like this. And you can see it's plenty long. Beautiful platinum, chromey, shiny, gorgeous white gold nib. You saw some beautiful close-ups in the video. But one of the things I really want to say about this is, this was not what I was expecting from them to celebrate the anniversary, but I'm kind of impressed with what they did because they could have been very, very lazy. They could have simply reminted a 149 and thrown on some, um, you know, they could have put this engraving. It could have just thrown on some commemorative stuff. They could have put the engraving, they could have put a special nib, and it could have looked exactly like a 149 otherwise. Instead, I sort of feel what they did with this almost as like a jazz riff. They pushed the definition of a 149 pretty far pretty pretty far with the marbled top you can see the marbling showing up quite a bit right here it looks even prettier in the video if you haven't caught my review of this please do it is up and then this very curvy sort of art nouveau 
clip with the big ball of metal at the end. Very Pilot Custom 823-ish at the end here. Beautiful platinum at the top. And of course the glacier is rendered very well. And nice platinum coated piston fill knob. And you do have your ink view windows, but it's full. If you watch the video, you can actually see the ink rising up into it while I fill it, which was a really cool effect. I actually saved that clip. So you might see that clip again one day, but I really quite like that. So, um, so yes, I feel like they really pushed the boundaries of a 149 because this almost makes it something else, doesn't it? And even these effects, I just feel like you're almost into a new model at this point, but enough where it's grounded into 149 territory. And it is very comfortable as any, a touch heavier, but very balanced. Very, very balanced. So an amazing writer, a beautiful pen, and a fun pen to use, but it did create a conundrum. And this is where we're gonna chat, and we're gonna talk about having too many pens and whatnot. It's time for you and me to chat. You and me, just us, nobody else. So I was done with buying any more expensive pens or drawing any more expensive pens toward me. Because when you make videos on YouTube, sometimes they come to you. Sometimes you don't ask, they come. In this case though, I got the Pelican M1000 and I felt like I just want to indulge in it for a while. I want to write with nothing but that pen. That pen is barely broken in. I think anyone who has an M1000 knows that you first get it, it feels one way and as you, as you write with it, it starts to feel even softer. It gets more interesting as you progress with it. Well, I was able to do that for a few weeks. I mean, how long has it been? Maybe two weeks? I, I don't even remember. I'd have to go back to my journal when it actually arrived, but it cannot be longer than three weeks. So I just didn't really get that honeymoon period with it before I was pushing it aside for this Mont Blanc 149 Origin Series. But remember a week ago when I said to you, we were talking and I said, I, I had to get this other grail pen and when I get it, you'll understand why. I think you, I think you do now. I think you understand why now. Because if you have an opportunity to experience that and to kind of have an opportunity to film with it and to really live with it and, and really discover a new 149, that's a big deal. Especially for a Monty Blani fanboy like myself. Self-professed. You can hurl it at me as an insult, and I'm kind of ambivalent about that because I'm, I'm telling you it's true. But that's why I had to do it. I had to do it. But I'm kind of, kind of ready now to not add more pens, but more pens are on their way. It's just the nature of my business. This is the life we have chosen, Michael. So that doesn't mean we're not going to kind of trim the fleet or maybe rehome some pens. There are some pens I feel are a little lonely in my collection. And recently a very nice viewer contacted me over on Instagram and they were absolutely over the moon about my citrus diplomat arrow. I have a Diplomat Arrow in Citrus. They were over the moon about it. And they said, um, would you be willing to sell it to me? And I thought, well, you know, I might need it to film again. But then I thought, you know, I've already filmed with it. It's not really showing up on any of my top 10 lists of anything. Maybe top 10 list of pens that look like Zeppelins. Um, a fine pen, by the way. Fine, beautiful nib, fantastic writing experience, but just not a pen that got a lot of love from me. And also, a lot of pens with me are sort of like boomerangs. I let them go, they come back, you know, in different forms. So a Diplomat Arrow may yet arrive. 
I'm like Jupiter and I pull things into my gravity. Is Jupiter a good thing? I don't know. I'm a gaseous giant. That's I'm a gas filled giant. That's what I am with a big red storm. So, um, but I did have an opportunity to make somebody very happy. So I sold them that pen and off it went. Um, packaged really nicely. Still had the original box. I have the box for everything. I keep all my boxes. I have the box for the Monty Blani. Here's the box. People say the box is cheap because it's paper. It's paper. It is. That I don't care about boxes. They go in the basement. Uh, some people do though. And it's valid. If you want a display case or you want to store it in something, it's valid to care. Um, I don't. Um, but they're all in the basement. So off my diplomat went. And I think I'm probably... I'm probably ready to rehome some other pens. It's time to effectively do what I said I would do in a live show about a year ago when I talked about it's time to sell off a bunch of pens. And I just never did. But I think I'm finally ready. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose very specifically. Very specifically. Oh, Wasky Squirrel's here. I got a very nice letter from Jason Wasky Squirrel. I just read it and responded. Um, such a lovely guy. I hope you guys are all following Wasky Squirrel. He's just a, a lovely guy. One of my favorite people on YouTube. And I'm, I'm proud to call him a friend. So nice to see you. Here's to you. Little mint tea. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. So when I, if I'm going to put a number to this, how many pens are too many pens? I think for me, it's where I am now, which is a little over a hundred. So I think a hundred is that mark. And I think it's time to pass some on, sell some off and perhaps invest in some others. I think my strategy now is to look for unique pens and ones that give me a certain experience that I cannot get otherwise. Something like a Pelican M1000. There's only that. Only, only that. But, um, you know, it is nice if I do rehome these pens that I do keep all the boxes. <laughs> and, um, it just makes it easier and it's better, I think, for the person receiving it. So I think you'll see on Instagram, I'll be rehoming some pens and um, putting the proceeds back into the channel. Probably picking up some other interesting pens that I feel would make a good video or a good idea I'm pursuing. I'm pursuing a lot of new ideas. We have some really great stuff coming up. I'm really excited. The tease video is really really good it's just so pretty i just think you're really going to like it my voice is really jacked tonight so miss marilyn darling promoting the pelican m1000 demonstrator yeah that would be nice there's a lot of pens i'd really like to have <clears throat> excuse me but you know i don't buy them for the sake of having them i'm not that interested in ownership ownership requires care it requires curation it requires um maintenance it requires a lot of things that i don't necessarily want to do where i think i would rather have a really well balanced collection that services me personally and the channel. And I think one of the things that really propagates the number of pens that you have is the fact that um, you start to want them in different nibs. It suddenly occurred to me I've never written in my life ever with a Montblanc with a stub nib. Never have. So now I'm really curious about having a stub nib. So I think I'll probably at some point pick up a, a stub and see what it's like. Same with um, Pelican. Never, never have. 
would really like to see what that is like. There's just a lot of different experiences. And that's why I'm glad, like, I don't ever want to make this channel about the pen of the week, the thing you must buy, the thing you must consume. Uh, one pen I'm super curious about is the Kaveco Piston Filler. I'm still hoping that I'll get one of those. Um, a friend of the channel was kind enough to say they'd send one along, and we're waiting to see when that arrives. I'd be super excited about that. So, a lot, a lot of fun there, but I think I have reached that threshold where I'm saying, you know what, it's probably probably too many too many pens <sighs> but selling the pens a big deal big deal for me I, I have a hard time letting go because it's sort of reason why i have all my books and people will ask well how many times you reread your books i often do many books i do reread many books i also remember passages and i want to relive them or i want to quote from them and i start to get into them to find that information. So I hold on to things. I create libraries of all sorts, inks, books, fountain pens. I suppose I have a fountain pen library. But I did want you guys to know why I had to have that Mont Blanc. And I think you understand. And hopefully you enjoyed the video. I, um, I released a lot of stuff this week. At the Curse of Writing video, which was a lot of fun. I enjoyed making that. I filmed that a, a, a while ago, but it's so nice to see it. I watched it again. I have to watch my own videos because sometimes people comment and I don't know what they're talking about if I don't watch it. So I had to watch it and I enjoyed it. And then um, my comedy video. Of course, if you don't know what pitch meeting is, that might have been lost on you a little, but it was certainly fun. For my wife and I, we had a ball. We had a ball. So, very cool. Um, Jason has a comment. Wasky Squirrel. I'd, I'd love some ideas on how to sell pens. I'm selling some off, but very slowly. I, I don't have too many ideas. This, this was my first pen that I sold. Wait, second. I did put up one last year when I bought the bronze um, sport. My wife actually bought it for me. But when we got that, I had two brass. I let one of the brass go to a, a lovely viewer, the channel, good friend. And um, I, I think I put it up on Instagram. So there's that. But the diplomat, I was approached. I was approached. So, so there we have it. So I hope you guys don't think I was too hard on Lamy. I had a great time with that. And as I said, comedy, you should punch up. Um, I didn't want to parody anybody else that's struggling on YouTube, as we all are. But Lamy is a fair target. Open target. And I'm sure they have a sense of humor. But they'll never see it. It's a small channel. So, right? They'll never see it, will they? I hope not. We'll see. DC trip is booked for August, so whomever's going to the DC Pen Super Show, at some point between now and then, be sure to contact me, because I'm sure we're going to do some kind of a meetup there. I just want to make sure we connect. If you're there and I'm there, I think I'm there all day Saturday. I'd love to see you. And then the other thing is the Commonwealth Pen Show not to be missed if you're anywhere around the orbit of New England. It's a fantastic show. It's very personable. Personal is probably better. I misspoke. It's very personal. There's a lot of really interesting vintage pens there. Nibmeisters, really good stuff. So, so that should be good. Looks like John's going to D.C. I will meet you there. That will be good. About time I get to meet you. Love to meet people in person and all that. So very, very good stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce someone to the show. Hopefully I can get them on correctly. Um, let me do a little magic here. We'll get... 
get Vanessa on. Do, do, do. Dun, 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 dun. I'd like to introduce you all to someone who you saw in my video on the Onion Skin Journal, who had such an inspiring and interesting story that I just felt like I needed to have her on the show which I would love to do right now and introduce you all to the first time I'm speaking directly to the amazing, the incredible Vanessa Root. Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Amazing, the technology actually works. It's fantastic when my live show actually works without a hitch. Absolutely delighted to see you. Thanks so much for joining. It's good Thank to see you. Thank you so much you. for having me. No, it's truly a pleasure. You were kind enough to send along the Onion Skin Journal for me to take a look at. And um, I really had a blast with it. I really did. I have it here. Um, so it's amazing how tough this thing is. I've abused mine. Oh, very nice. You have the cover. Um, really love the paper. I've been a huge fan of Onion Skin. And it was super fun to have it in a journal. I thought maybe we would start off and give you an opportunity to make some corrections of my criticisms. <laughs> well, I think I'm trying to remember what they were. The first one was, so for everyone that watched it, you had mentioned that you were worried that the paper was too fragile. And so you were trying to be careful with it. Turning pages. Um, yeah, turning pages. Yep. And actually what's quite interesting, and I'm just gonna rip out a piece of mine, um, is this paper is actually really hard to rip, surprisingly. Mm. And I don't know exactly why that is. You can, you know, rip it if you really try, but it's not, you know, I'm doing it as hard as possible. Sure. It's, rip like that and what's also really cool um i think you had mentioned that it bleeds through yes and and if you don't mind um i sometimes i get mad at myself because i wasn't thinking as specific as i should be because i was conflating the term bleed with ghost uh. and so your criticism of my criticism is extremely valid so go right ahead <laughs> Well, I just, yeah, so the the interesting thing about onion skin paper is even though it's like slightly translucent, you would think that inks, when you would draw on it, would bleed onto the next page. And actually what happens is there is some ghosting in which you can see the next page behind. Um, excuse my handwriting because I know this is a fountain pen. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. We welcome so, everyone. Yeah. But I picked some pics of you with a fountain pen. I don't know if you noticed that, but like. Well, but, I use a fountain pen, but I'm just not, I'm not as uh, skilled as you guys. I, are. I don't know. Have you seen this writing? I mean, come on. That's incredible. It's kind of <laughs> ugly, but thank you. You're very kind. Um. So yeah, there's no, you know, I've used acrylic. People have used acrylic pens, fountain pen um markers and nothing i've used so far is bled through one time i got a comment that ink from like rubber stamps did but i think okay. you would have to like really go for it because i got that one comment once but gotcha. um, yeah. yeah well and i think here to and i'll probably never make this mistake again because i try not to make the same mistake twice i'll make a ton of mistakes the first time but i try not to make them again um ghosting is you can see the ink it's clearly a translucent paper mm -hmm. so you're going to see it as you turn the page or even on the next page and personally i think that's one of the things that makes it really cool so here's the back of the page you can see what your writing looks like from the back and I was saying it's almost like an x-ray effect and you can sort of see your shading and everything else. But no bit of that ink has soaked through the paper, which in my opinion is what bleeding is. The way on a moleskin journal, you can just put a period 
and it you get a splotch on the other side like a like a bullet wound or something <laughs> so so yes it's got a fantastic character to it that makes it unique and it's one of the things that makes it so unique and um maybe why don't you kind of walk us through your inspiration why onion skin and mm -hmm. um kind of your creative process if you would absolutely so I started Onion Skin Journal about three years ago, and I've always written in journals since I was a little, you know, since I could first write. So I've got, you know, bins and bins of journals. And I had kind of always just been on that search for the perfect journal. Mm -hmm. um, every time I'd finish a journal, I'd usually go to a bookstore, and I just kept seeing kind of the same stuff that I knew was just wholesaled from China um, or wherever I shouldn't yeah. pinpoint the country, but, you know, it was made in a factory and had a glued binding and the pages would be kind of hard to open. And it just wasn't inspiring as a writer to use these journals. I really loved like the handmade journals. Um, and then my, during the beginning of, you know, 2020, my father passed away and I was going through, mm -hmm. it was a really difficult time. That's so and I was, rough. Yeah. Thank I'm you. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. And he was just a lover of antiques and a lover of things that were old. Mm -hmm. You know, he just loved quality and he would antique and he would get all these knickknacks. And one of the things he loved was old books from his childhood. And so he had all these cool old books that had linen covered, you know, mm. and they were just, I would pick it up and I just was like, this is a book. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. With beautiful and, illustrations and some of the Art Deco covers and whatnot. Those, yeah, I love those. I, I try to pick up them when I can. They're getting more and more expensive as you find them yeah. around these days. Totally. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, and then... So I was like, why don't they make books like this? And I found myself at a place in my life where I was in a transition. And so my brother handed me a stack of vintage onion skin paper. Nice. And I loved that paper. And so things just sort of started clicking with me as I was looking for a new journal. I couldn't really go to stores because it was the pandemic. Uh -huh. And... So I was, you know, kind of looking online. I found a bunch of beautiful journals on Etsy, but it, you know, nothing, I, I couldn't be like sure they were going to be the right journal. And it just clicked with me. I was like, why don't I just make a journal that has every element that I look for when I'm shopping for a journal, like the perfect journal. Mm -hmm. And so, uh -huh. and I'll try to wrap it up here, but basically. You're fine. Um, okay. Okay. I don't yeah, know we, what... we have like 25 minutes, so, you know, oh. <laughs> yeah. So it all began. It all so, began in um, 1985. Exactly. Know. That's actually when I was born. Oh, um, see that? It began in 1985. But um, my mom's watching this, so. Oh, very nice. Hi, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> so um, was it hard to... So you, you imagined you wanted this per perfect journal. And yeah. I think for a lot of inventors and entrepreneurs, the inspiration is to, quote unquote, build the best, better mousetrap, which is the mm -hmm. old cliche. Um, how was it sourcing paper and, and all that? Was that a nightmare? Was it discouraging or did you nail it right away? Um, so really the the... I found a paper source, which I won't talk about here because sure. it is a... <laughs> yeah, you got to keep your, your things secret. Yes. Um, but I mean, and you can find it out there. So I found I found a paper source. And the honestly, the hardest part was... And the, I had an idea of the book I wanted to make, but no, um, no book binders or publishing companies would make me a journal with that paper because they said it was too thin for their machinery because they all use the modern machinery now. Um, and so that it just couldn't be done. And yeah. I was having a conversation with another brother of mine who had worked on a project with this bookbinder out in Miami. 
And he's like, I don't know, maybe give him a call. And I gave him a call and he was like, oh yeah, sure. No. And you know, I'd called me seven or eight different companies and I was like, okay, I guess this dream is dashed. It can't wow. be done. Wow. Can't that's a, a lucky break. Yeah. Yeah. And these guys, you know, it's a grandfather. His dad came in from Cuba in the fifties, I think. Wow. And worked for this book binding, uh, this book binding business. Cause back then it was a big business and they did everything by hand and on turn of the century machinery. And when the guy, the owner retired, um, this grandfather, Luis, uh, was just their accountant. And he said, okay, well I'll buy it. And he learned the trade and wow. taught his son. And then his son taught his son and they still use all the old machinery and by hand. So yeah, that's awesome. that was, and that's yeah. exactly the spirit you were trying to capture. So, exactly. so everything worked there. So then you had to obsess over size and kind of come up with what you thought was the perfect size, which yeah. this is a very good size. It's, it's sort of elegant. It's very concise. It's 320 pages if memory serves. Yeah. It's a good size for shelving. I do notice you, you put the print, the kind of the European style. Was there a specific reason for that? Honestly, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. Yeah, please. <laughs> when I got the prototype, my book binder did it that way. And I didn't really notice. So I first <laughs> got books done, you know, because I didn't know if this was business was going to take off or not. And then w someone who bought one of the first hundred books was like, oh, it's backwards. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. And then it's I like found the out zipper. It it's the zipper argument. You, you, if you buy a European jacket and you're an American and you're like, I, it's got a lady zipper on it. A lot of uh -huh. Americans think because the zippers are on the other side. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I found out it was that's how they do it in Europe. Sure. And I, I had the opportunity to change it. And I was like. I love that it's different and I love, I mean, things that come from Europe are old. I mean, they've been doing things the, you, you know, we all came from Europe or from everywhere, you sure. know, so, uh, initially. So, um, I mean, not all of us cause yeah. you know, we didn't come from the country, but, um, you and me anyway. at least. <laughs> yeah. 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 I no, thought it was fun. Uh, sure. Yeah. Sure. I, I just think it's a really great dimension. And I like, I like how well it's all put together. The end paper is really lovely. Um, you, you put a lot of different designs on the covers. Mine's kind of the more staid one. Mm -hmm. Mine is like the kind of laid back, but you have like Ouroboros and you have, yes, that's really nice. I got really some moon. Moon phases, always, always good. Is there a theme to these? Is there something very personal to you? Yes. Yeah, so my logo is the Ouroboros. That's the original collection that you can see on the website. And um, right now we're actually sold out of a lot of the colors. Um, so those will be, they're in the making right now. Sure. Um, but all of my symbols have some sort of deeper meaning to them that involves healing. Um, so in my life, you know, like many people, I've gone through my own struggles um, and I am 11 years sober. And so I chose the Ouroboros because the Ouroboros is a symbol of rebirth. You know, it's like life and death, rebirth, the cycles we go through. Sure. Um, and it was just a, it was a, it's a powerful symbol that reminds me of, you know, my power to co consistently renew, um, no matter what happens. And so sure. I love that. And then, you know, the moon is, you know, it's the symbolic of the waxing and waning of life. Mm -hmm. The botanical mm -hmm. one, you know, is the symbol of, um, growth, you sure. know, so they all have just like a, whatever the person is looking for. And in my website, there's little descriptions. And then hopefully the book is imbued with that energy with it for you. Sure. I can see that. I mean, it's, it's kind of nice to have something to focus on. Certainly as somebody doing a review, it's always nice to have a narrative. Yes. You, you know, because like for me and kind of the spirit of this channel 
is that it's if you remove all the associations, all the narrative, it's just an inanimate object. And yeah. to me, almost nothing is just an inanimate object. I, <laughs> I, I kind of attach all sorts of history and, and um, significance into every item. One of my taglines for the channel is that from a pen, we go everywhere because writing mm -hmm. is so elemental to who we are as people. And then, to have a place to collect it is sort of like a personal library. It's a treasury of your internal topography mm. at that at that moment, if you yeah. will. Yeah, beautifully said. Thanks. So what sort of stuff, if, if we peeked in your journal, what kind of stuff is in there? Well, one of the benefits of being a journal business owner is I use anywhere from like three to five to six journals at once. Wow. Um, and I, I typically have different uses for them. Like I have one journal that is for cooking recipes. My favorite journal is a journal where I just have quotes from every morning. I sort of sit and just sit in quiet with my, with my drink and I'll read books and I'll just write out my favorite lines or quotes from books. Oh, nice. Like a common book. Yeah, like teachings yeah. and things I want to remember. Um, nice. With the like idea of maybe to pass that on to somebody one day. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have my journal where I just free write, you know, my morning pages. And um, so, yeah. I, and, you know, being a journal business owner, it's, it's, it's hard because every time I have like a new chapter in my life. I'm like, I want to start a new journal. Sure. <laughs> I have a hard time finishing them. Yeah, and you're but killing your own margins. You're like, you know. I, I am. Yeah. So you say you carry one? I... Hmm? I'm sorry. Uh, do you carry one with you throughout the day? Yep. Yeah, I always have one. Um, my partner has, he has a, uh, I make the little soft cover cahiers. Okay. Um, and he carries one in his back pocket. I have a purse, oh, nice. so I carry a big one. Sure, I, I I have a bag I carry too, you know, to the office. And I, there's a lot of stuff in there. I'm actually thinking of doing a video, like what's in my bag, you know, like Vogue <laughs> does. He's like, what's in your bag with uh, Carrie Kloss? It's gonna be, maybe, maybe yeah. I'll do it like that, you know, <laughs> it'll be just silly. So funny, yeah. When you, have, when you have your own YouTube channel, you can do really silly things too. <laughs> But um, I, I've been using it to write poems. Kind of my process mm -hmm. is that I just dash something out and probably 50 of them are complete kind of rubbish. But then there'll be one where I'm like, okay, I like that. And then that's the one I'll work on and try to turn it into something that I feel proud of, you know? Oh. And that's actually uh, one of my journals is a poetry book as well. I oh, like nice. one of my, so my other, a lot of people sometimes know me as Ramey Road on yes. the Unchained Journal. And so I should probably. I sh probably should have introduced you as both. That was, that was no, my, okay. my mistake because your publish is Ramey Road. Yes. So I wrote a, pu a book of poetry and I'm published as Ramey Road. And the reason for that is, is I had uh, my Instagram, my Ramey Road handle far before I started the onion skin journal. And it was a way for me to publish my poetry in the world without like, I think at the time I was a little nervous to just do it on my personal page. Sure. So I sort of came with my, my pen name it's through some family names. Um, but I, I don't know about six months ago, I was like, you know, I just want to be my name. So, oh, so you start transitioning. To, yeah, I'm transitioning yeah. from the Ramey Road, which I love, and that's a important chapter of my life. But I'm, it's fun just to be me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I can see that because Hemingway Jones is a numb to internet of mine that I've been using since right around the turn of the last century. So it's out there and it has its own history. And sometimes I do feel like we're two different people. Mm -hmm. And and I do answer to it, and I I am sometimes recognized in public as either person, so yeah. it's it's kind of interesting. Usually in airports, for whatever reason, 
you know, I do have to recognize someone, Shaq MD with a $49.99 super sticker. Thank you so much, my friend. That is incredibly, incredibly uh, generous. Thank you. And he says, I guess, oh, okay. It's describing to me the emoji you posted, which always throws me off because on my software, it describes emojis and then I think it's a message, but. Thank you so much. Shaq MD. If you're not following Shaq MD, everyone, please do. Wonderful channel. And five dollars from the amazing Puppet Access. Thank you, Puppet Access. Lovely guy. Really appreciate the support. So thank you very much. So Remy, do you want uh, how do you I just saw this yeah. message? Please. I can't see all the messages, but I want to just address someone asked if I sell loose leaf onion skin paper. I've been cutting mm -hmm pages out of my Ouroboros. <laughs> so don't wow. do that. Yeah. You don't have to. Do that. I get it. Um, I sell notepads and we were sold out, but we just finished making more. So they easily tear out the pages easily tear out. So you can, you can buy notepads and that a lot of people will like write, send letters to people using the notepads. I get a lot of letters on onion skin. So I have some vintage myself. It gets, I have stuff that's not that great. It like wrinkles, like, but mm -hmm. the stuff I have is literally from the 1930s. It's all brown yeah. at the edges and stuff like it's yeah. cool. And sometimes I like to use it cause it is so old, but you know, sometimes it's, um, it's not like yours. Yours is smooth and beautiful, you know, and translucent, which is really nice. And, yeah. um, it folds really nicely. Yeah. It's got a good quality. We have a pen pal yeah. group here at the channel for um, our members, which is oh, a lot fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. So I do a lot of correspondences every week. So what's next? So what is next? Um, I'm writing a second book of poetry, so that's wow. just kind of fun side project that I do, but my plan is just to continue to grow onion skin journal. Um, mm -hmm. I do pretty much everything on my own, except I have someone who does my shipping for me. Um, if anyone ordered a book in the last five days, I apologize for the late shipping. She had a family thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but normally we ship same day or next day. Um, great. So yeah, I just want to expand and start doing some more wholesale um, and get my books in Europe to make it easier uh -huh. for my European customers um, because the ship to ship to Europe is quite a bit of money. So I want to start to get some hubs in different areas of the world so that, because I do get a surprising number of international orders. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah. So yeah, just keep, you know, great. living that on. So you think new covers, maybe different sizes? Yes. Yes. So we're always, I try to do limited runs except for the Ouroboros, which is my like classic collection. Yeah. But you know, once these are sold out, they're just going to be sold out. Uh, oh, no kidding. And, oh, that's great. How many is yeah. there? Like a few hundred or? Yeah, I typically make a few hundred per per design oh wow so, wow that's yeah. exciting yeah. i do want to recognize alia rose thank you for the dollar super chat very kind thank you it's lovely people here tonight i really appreciate it so um so that's pretty interesting now how will people know when you restock do you post that on instagram or should they just follow your website uh, at the onion skin journal because that's yeah, the best so way for them to get one is to go Definitely. to the onion and it's onionskinjournal.com. Yeah, it's the onionskinjournal.com and you should get a little pop up or be able to scroll to the bottom of the screen and there'll be a place to sign up for the newsletter. Mm -hmm. I maybe send one email a month, two emails a month, so you're not going to get spammed, but it's there that right. I'll mention and newsletter subscribers get like a lot of um, discounts and sales that I never announce on social media. Um, and then if there's like a limited product, they'll get the first shot before it sells, sells out. So 
Oh, that's fantastic. I, I see some people are saying that they're going to order one now. The great laddie, who is a supporter of my channel and a personal friend. So he's ordering one, uh, which is very you. nice. And Thomas Quinn says, great guest. Loved hearing from you. So, um, you know, a lot of love and support. I know a lot of people in the comments were saying that they were very, very interested. A lot of people said they picked one up. People were sending me pictures of their new onion skin. Oh, okay. so, which oh, was super fun. fun, you know? I know. I got quite a bit of sales after you posted the, um, the, the review of it. Oh, that's great. That is fantastic. I, uh, I really enjoyed doing that and it, um, it did, you know, pretty well. People seem to really like it. And I noticed like we can see in the analytics where the traffic comes from. A lot of it was coming from external. So I don't even know where it was. People were sharing it somewhere. So that was super. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been really nice. I I love I started watching a bunch of your videos after, okay. you know, because I've been following you on Instagram for a while. And there was yeah. just something about your style of, you know, talking about things that I just really loved. And it's been really fun getting to know you through your shows and on Instagram. And and yeah, I feel very blessed that that you tried my journal and you liked it. I did like it. I was really happy when you sent it. You sent me a message and it's kind of funny because you communicate by recording messages in Instagram because you don't want to type all that. It's and I'm Gen X, but I'm like very boomerish where I'm like, oh, OK, this is look at this newfangled way of communicating. So then I'm like and then, of course, it cut off right before you actually said what you but I it sounded like you were building up to something. So I was like. I think you want me to review your journal. I would be delighted to do so. So, so thank you. Cause like, I was always curious about it and I'm, I'm sure I would have bought one eventually. So, so that was uh, really nice and really kind. And I have to recognize one Mr. Goodman with a $10 super chat. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Pretty exciting stuff. If anybody has any questions, I am keeping an eye on the comments. Oh, okay. Here's one from Pinexer. Vanessa, this is to you. What is your pen of choice for this lovely paper? Well, so when I was watching your show, I started panicking because I'm like, <laughs> I am not, I love using fountain pens. Sure. Um, I sell some fountain pens on my website. Sometimes I'll use those. They're really beautiful. They're like They're, handcrafted. Yeah. They look by very nice. Grandfather and uh, son duo in Kentucky. I really try to keep everything with like real people, you nice. know, like it's, that's like a big motto of my business. I hire local people, like, you know, pretty much everything I do is, is local or within the U S by artisans. Um, but right now I'm using this. I'm even embarrassed to show you guys. No, out. don't be, I, we really don't judge. I, I don't like to be a gatekeeper and be like, Oh, it's Only a Kaweco sport. Yeah. Kawecos are awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. Is it I a fountain like it. pen? It's a fountain pen, yeah. That is a top tier pen. Why are you embarrassed? I love well, the Kaweco sport. I don't know much about fountain pens. Oh no, I've that is a classic. Lot. Okay. I've learned a lot from from everybody since I start launched my business because you know, I'm a writer, sure. but there's a whole other class of people that are like professional writer journalers you know yeah. and it's been amazing getting to know this this community like i started this business i had no idea this community existed and everyone has been so supportive it's expansive just as you feel yeah. like you encompass it there's some door that opens and it plunges you into a whole different world um yeah. pen shows are a lot of fun you should consider a pen show sometime maybe Go there, bring some stock and set up a booth. You'd probably sell out in a weekend, you know. I would love to. Well, so I got, I ordered my pens that I have on my website from a pen show. So oh, I've been right. to one and it was really fun. But yes, I would love, I would love to do a pen show sometime. So maybe this year that'll be something I ex can expand to. And if anyone here in the, you know, wants to DM me ideas or anything, I love responding on Instagram. So. Fantastic. So that's a good way for people to find you under the Onion Skin Journal on Instagram. Yeah. 
and your website. Very important, everyone. If you want one, go to her website, theonionskinjournal.com. So exciting. This is fun. I'm really glad you came. I'm really glad we met. I um, I really loved your story. I found it so inspirational. I, I wanted to put it all in the video, but I thought it'd be better if you told your story yourself. Um, I, I feel like I got to the essence of a, of, of a lot of what you're doing and tried to show that positivity and that the kind of the, you know, the beauty of, of all your, everything you create. So, you know, it's been very interesting for me and fun. And it's, it's sort of a challenge, this book. That's what I like about it. For me, it opened me up expressively, but I can see a lot of other people are very aesthetic the calligraphers of the world and the people that can put little pictures in and make things look really lovely. It's, it's very inspirational, that whole world. So, Well, you've been an inspiration to watch and I am really you. excited to continue to watch so I can expand my fountain pen knowledge. Nice. Um, well, I appreciate that. I got a great video this yeah. week, Thursday. It's the right. five inks that are tea flavored. So I think you'll yeah. like it. I love tea, so oh, I'm excited for this one. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you coming on and um, hope to have you on again. I hope we can work together again. If you have something new you ever want to do, I, I'd love to, um, to do this again. Would love to. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, keep in touch. Yes. You know how to get me too. And thank you so much for coming on and we wish you every success. Thank you so much. Thank you all. All right, you bet. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, there you have it. The amazing Vanessa Root of the Onion Skin Journal. That was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. I um, I just love stuff like that. It just keeps me inspired. I was getting a little stale on my poetry, and I sort of feel like I have a second lease thanks to the Onion Skin Journal. So it was like that simple, and it really inspired me. So... Maybe it'll inspire you too, so consider it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was super fun having someone on. We haven't had a guest in a while. Still trying to have Fountain Pen Therapy on, but he's not responding to me. He's very, he's a very elusive fellow, but we love him, and I'm sure we'll hear from him soon, and then maybe we can have him on too. So great new video coming up on tea-flavored inks on Thursday, but tonight I feel like we've said it all. We've said a lot. We're at the end, but it was fantastic, wasn't it? I appreciate you all being here. I appreciate all the support. If you've watched this whole time, please subscribe. You like it. Enjoy it. Why not? I'd love to get to know you, and um, you can be in the loop of what's going to happen. So thank you, Vanessa, for being here. You're fantastic. You were great. Thank you all, and we'll see each other again further up the road. So take care.